Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. Now, our guest today is a good friend and colleague of mine, someone I have great respect and appreciation for. Sean Hanekam. Sean Hanekam lives in South Africa in Johannesburg, and he is a medical intuitive and integrative wellness practitioner and Akashic record reader in um, South Africa. You can find out more about Sean Hanekam and his wonderful work at his website, nautiluswellness.com. Welcome, Sean Hanekam. Hi, Catherine. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me back on your show. Now, uh, in this interview, Sean Hanakam and I are going to talk about a very timely and very important subject, which is about how to recover from long COVID. And at this point, literally millions of people all over the world have suffered from um, coronavirus 19, COVID 19 and um, many millions of people have died. And uh, so I'd like to start by Sean Hanekam. Would you be willing to share for our audience what happened to you? How did you get sick with COVID-19? Hi, Catherine, yes, uh, thank you, not a problem. So basically what happened to me, and this was earlier in this year in March, um, this I is think, March 2021, yes. 2021, yes. I had been working extremely long hours because of the number of individuals um, who were struggling with COVID um, and people, you know, being in crisis mode, being in hospital, being in ICUs, um, medical doctors putting their hands in their hair, um, you know, and trying everything to the, the best of their ability. Um, but yet, you know, um, like a crisis situation. So even with my diary being full, when I switch my phone on in the morning, I get three, four, five, um, like 911 calls for people needing urgent attention. So what happened there basically is, is that um, I was working extended hours, 12, 13, 14 hours a day to, to accommodate these people. Some of them clients, some of them new clients. And, you know, obviously families being in a desperate mode when a loved one is, um, kind of knocking on, on, on death's door. And uh, I wasn't too phased by that um, because firstly, my commitment to what I do. And secondly, I, because of what I, what I do, I can check my immune system. My immune system was great. I was taking the correct supplements. And uh, then on this one specific afternoon, I had an interaction with somebody that I knew that was doing some energy clearing work for me. Um, I'm somebody based in the US as well. And uh, within 30 minutes of me having had that session, um, my system basically crashed. And what had happened is I had this external energy force that uh, kind of invaded my space and um, yeah, kind of took me out of the equation. And so I was manned down. Um, I didn't think much of it. I just thought it was the session of mine that was processing because sometimes that can happen when a person does energy clearing. And uh, it was just before the long weekend and uh, my wife started having the sniffles and a, and a sore throat and we were planning to have all the children over. And she said, you know, she thinks she should go for a COVID test because the last thing she wants to do is have COVID and then infect the children. And she, got, she went and did a PCR test and it came back as being uh, COVID positive. So then I just knew automatically at that point in time, it'd be a waste of time for me to go for my COVID test because invariably I've got COVID as well. And I must say to you, we must probably had a, um, I almost want to use the word, the, the night of the dark souls. We experienced for about a period of two weeks. Um, I myself lost about 10 kilograms in the, in the process. Um, we were severely, severely ill that there were some days I'd wake up and I'd say to my wife, it feels like somebody's trying to kill me in the psyche. But in the interim, all along, just because of my understanding of Chinese medicine and, and Western herbs and, and nutritional supplementation, 
I made sure that I was dosing with the correct tablets and I was dosing was probably anywhere between 60 and 80 tablets a day, which on its own was mind boggling. Um, we had absolutely no desire to eat any food. Um, so consumed water, electrolytes, and would nibble on, on the odd fresh thing. The interesting thing though that I did note is, is that my body had, had only had a desire for, for fresh food. No, no frozen food, no canned food. Uh, so that was a bit of an interesting um, observation. I continued with my, with my medication, like I say, and then because of me having this energy um, interference, I knew that uh, I had a problem, but because of where I was at, I, I was working on myself, but I knew that I wasn't accessing what I needed to access. And then via one of my friends, um, who's also an Akashi teacher, when I chatted to her, she said, no, hang on, this, we need the big guns here. So she first introduced me to one of her friends who was a demonologist. And uh, this lady worked with me. She, she picked up some um, external energies interfering in my field. Um, and then within 12 hours of working with me, this energy entity targeted her. So <laughs> she had to go to the, to the next level and, and, and bring somebody in that was more powerful. And then between the two of them, they, they managed to clear my energy field, my wife's energy field, our home environment. And then I systematically started feeling a little bit more human. Um, although we were really progressing from the bedroom to the lounge and just kind of exchanging scenery so that we could sleep uh, further. And then what had happened is I then decided I need to check my oxygen saturation levels. At that time, I was at 85%. I then knew also that, um, um, you know, with what I'd been using at a natural level, the natural uh, medicine and supplements were, were not doing, they were not strong enough for what uh, I needed. I then spoke to a friend of mine and I said, well, what are you guys doing to sort out the saturation levels? And when he heard me and he heard my voice, he immediately said, hang on. <laughs> We need to start with a couple of things. So I immediately started with the ivermectin, which I know is a quite a controversial uh, topic as well, um, globally at the moment, but I started with the ivermectin. Um, I started with an antibiotic and I started with some cortisone. And I also then had to get one or two cortisone pumps, um, firstly to fight off uh, bacteria and things in the lungs, and then also to energize um, my, my breathing and things like that. Um, so I was probably spent a good 10 days on that specific course. I then went on a second course of, uh, of Western meds. Um, and then we got to the point where, um, although I was feeling better, I was having these severe coughing spasms um, because obviously what had happened is there was severe inflammation um, in, my, um, in, my, in my bronchi. Um, so much so that the one day I was sitting at my desk and I uh, started coughing and I, and I got up and I walked to the bathroom and when I woke up, I was lying in the shower. So I had a blackout and I phoned this doctor friend and then he was scared that I'd had a stroke. So I then, after that, I went for what they call a D-dimer blood test to check for blood clots. Luckily, that came up clear. And in the same time, I went for some chest x-rays um, which highlighted an element, but I don't think it gave the full picture. And then I also did an MRI brain scan just to make sure that I never had a, an aneurysm, a brain aneurysm. And fortunately that came back clear. And uh, then during that period, I was taking some blood thinners and utilizing um, the um, advanced salmon oil, which has eight different omegas in that because that reduces inflammation in the body um, and it also uh, helps them the blood. And in that time, I was between the allopathic meds, the Chinese meds, supplements. I kept on with that protocol till I got to a point where this friend of mine said, look, you know, nothing that I'm doing here now from an allopathic perspective is actually working for you. You now need to go see a, a physician specialist and a pulmonologist, which I then did. Um, and uh, the, this uh, physician specialist then ran a whole range of blood tests, which all came back normal, which she was quite surprised with. Um, I also in the interim had, had another PCR test and I was uh, COVID free um, prior to seeing her. And then the 
after going through all of these blood tests, the next best response was a, was a CAT scan of my lungs. And that basically gave her the answer in terms of the, the level of damage that had, that, occurred, that had occurred to my lungs and my lung function. And the, once again, the, the best response that we had there, but obviously at the time it was uh, appropriate, was high doses of, uh, of pregnazone, as well as another antibiotic. And I must probably spend, so the, the, the antibiotic I used for about seven to 10 days, and then I was on high doses, which I would wean and change the dose every two weeks over a period of, uh, of almost three months. And I must say that then remedied uh, the, the mucus component that I had within my lungs. I was then in a better position to work on myself. And I also had another friend of mine um, who um, has a skier machine. And over this time, I've actually come to respect that device um, profoundly in terms of the, the level of detail um, that that device picks up. And even with that, I, I must probably had three sessions with her over, a, over an eight week period. Um, even though, you know, my PCR and everything showed that I was COVID free at a uh, subtle energy level, the um, skier machine was still picking up that we had residue of the COVID bacteria in our, in our, in our lungs. Um, and so I worked basically um, did that for myself and my wife, and we cleared that out of our systems. And um, when I say to you, touch wood, we've been, uh, we've been going quite well um, in terms of that since we've, since we've done that. And um, um, one of the other things that I started incorporating as well is I went on um, quite a, a strict protocol of uh, superfoods. Um, because once again, in South Africa, unfortunately, we struggle to find organic foods or the consistency of organic foods. And the best approach was the, uh, was the superfood. So I kind of looked at what was out there. I put together a concoction for myself and I started engaging with that. And I could actually feel um, the, the, the benefit of the superfoods just in terms of my, my whole system. You know? So Sean Hanekam, Integrative Wellness Practitioner, so let's bring this back for our audience. So Sean Hanukkah is a world recognized integrated wellness practitioner and he got COVID. And I believe this was seven months ago now that you got sick, correct? And correct. right before we started the recording, you shared with me that you now have Bell's palsy, right? And do you believe that's a side effect of having had COVID? Well, actually once again, you know, this. I started having these symptoms last week. And uh, once again, I was doing the Chinese med stuff, working on my stuff, but I could feel there was a level of interference there again. And um, I then uh, chatted to my homeopath who on Sunday um, dispensed some formula for me um, to treat the Bell's palsy. And then by yesterday, I could feel, you know, things were not great. So I made contact with the two ladies that helped me early on in the year, the two demonologists, and they were so kind to help me immediately. Um, and once again, they released some distorted energies out of my energy field. Um, and uh, then this friend of mine with a skier, once again, she jumped on board afterwards and she ran another protocol for me. And when I woke up this morning, um, it's almost like there'd been a deterioration. So some of my face had improved, but the deterioration was around my, my mouth. So when I'd have my porridge, my food would be running out of my mouth. You know, so a bit of a joke, um, you know, felt like, you know, there was, yeah, what can I use <laughs> as a description? But it was just a, a weird experience. And then I said, no, hang on. And I phoned that uh, medical doctor friend of mine again, because I thought maybe I need to go see a neurologist or go for another brain scan. And he said, no, hang on, you've got Bell's palsy. I've just dealt with somebody like that. And he gave me a prescription again um, for some more prednisone and a antiviral formula, um, which I've now subsequently through my research the, 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 the antibiotic that he's given me or the antiviral that he's given me is spot on for that treatment. And uh, in actual fact, the interesting thing for me is when I was treating my lungs with a prednisone, I was on about 30 milligrams a day. And for me now to treat the Bell's palsy, I'm on 60 milligrams a day, so. Right. And let's take this back to our audience. So big picture, at this point, Sean Hanekam 
and I medical, I'm a medical intuitive in the US working with people all over the world. Sean is a medical intuitive in South Africa and also working with people over the world. So um, at the time Sean got sick, he was not vaccinated. And the vaccines are pretty scarce in South Africa. I believe you said that at this point, at the time of this recording, only about 10% of the population in, the, in South Africa has been vaccinated. Here in the US, the number of people who I believe have had at least one vaccine is more like approaching 70%. So we're, we agreed not to get into the controversy about vaccines. <laughs> I, I wrote a blog on this subject and I've never received so much hate mail in my life. <laughs> so we're going there, but a couple points, Sean was not vaccinated when he was first got sick. He's an expert in natural healing. He had, uh, access to the best energy healers, the best homeopaths, the best nutritionists, excellent medical doctors. And seven months later, he's experiencing Bell's palsy. And I myself, I've done healing on people who haven't been vaccinated, who've had one vaccine, who had breakthrough cases at two, you know, after two vaccines. So I've seen people get sick in every possible combination. And I will say some of my healthiest clients have gotten sick. So in other words, if you ask me to name, you know, your healthiest clients and they got sick and like Sean, they felt like they were going to die. So one thing I think that we can all agree on is you don't want to get COVID. <laughs> and um, I, I have to share this personal story because in 2020, I, you know, shut down my in-person visits with clients and I was only working with people remotely. But one of my healthiest clients asked me to see, see me in person. She said, please, I really need to see you in person. We, and I said, okay, but we both have to wear masks. And she said, okay, so we, she, I spent about an hour and a half with her. I was doing some hands-on healing. So my hands were on her, but we were both wearing masks. When she left, I washed my hands. And one of the important things about this is the next day she texted me and said, will you please call me? Catherine, will you please call me? Well, she and her children had gotten sick. Her kids had been at her ex-husband's house and the nanny there was sick but the point was i didn't get sick because i was wearing a mask so if you're listening to this broadcast please wear a mask if you go out in public or if you're interacting with people closely in indoor spaces even people that you think might be healthy and um and you don't want to get sick now we're going to be talking in this interview about how to overcome long COVID. And Sean Hanukkah, after seven months, you're still working on this. So as, some, as a natural health practitioner who's been through this, and you can objectively look at what you went through, what are some of the important steps that you feel that people need to take once they have uh, tested positive on a COVID test? What are some of the things they need to start doing immediately? Yeah. Look, I think for me, the, the interesting thing or the eye-opener here was, is regardless of, of how healthy your immune system is, when, and you're taking all the correct supplements, the moment you are diagnosed with COVID, you need to be open to interacting with Western medicine. Okay, and that's really because of the fact that I work with integrative medicine, I believe that I need to do what I need to do when I need to do it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't opposed to, to doing this stuff because obviously my approach is preventative health care. Um, and uh, so I would say Western medicine is important. And there are quite a lot of podcasts out there with doctors in the U.S. that have a, a protocol, both from a, um, a, a, a natural medicine perspective in terms of supplementation. And they also have a protocol in terms of, uh, of Western medicine. Now, for me, one of the ingredients... And if you look at the science, and like I said, it's been a very controversial topic, but once again, dealing with some of the medical doctors here in South Africa, 
the guys that are working closely with COVID is ivermectin has been a very large contributing factor to people um, surpassing COVID, getting better, better, getting better quickly. People that were on death's bed that were administered COVID um, actually came through that. So that's one of the ingredients. And then obviously there are a range of other medications because also what I've seen with COVID is as a I want to use the word an incubation period. And the, when you get COVID, you need to kind of keep track of your symptoms and the day that your symptoms started so that your doctor knows how to administer the um, correct medication for you at the correct time, because that is crucial in your healing. And also with this Western doctor that I'm working with is, is that he highlighted to me, you know, that unfortunately there have been incidents where people have been medicated incorrectly and that has led, led to their hospitalization and in some cases death. But if medicated correctly, you shouldn't end up in hospital and uh, you shouldn't definitely not die. Okay, and that was in, interject here, Sean. And like you, I think that COVID-19 is such a dreadful illness that it's important to pull out all the stops. And 100%. We, Sean and I are in complete agreement about this. So if you've been diagnosed, don't just try and treat yourself. Don't just look up what natural remedies you have, to, you, you think might work for you. Talk to your doctor immediately. And then I find one of the things that's very helpful, this is what I observe is this is a very fast moving disease and symptoms can change from day to day. So a really good, uh, self-care mechanism that you can do is to keep a food mood and supplement and medication diary. In other words, every day, write down what medications you took, what supplements you took, the symptoms that you had. And I realize when you're on death's door or feeling like you're going through a dark night of the soul, you may not have the energy to it to do that but you can get a family member to write down what you're doing so that you can keep track so that the medical doctors who are helping you and the natural healers who are helping you can understand what you have been doing and what has been in your system. Well, I think Catherine on, on that note, you know, and, and the medical people and the other natural practitioners that know me, um, when they eventually saw me after I'd lost 10 kilos and I looked like death warmed up, um, you know, everybody said to me, um, if it wasn't that you knew what you knew and you did what you did, you would have been a hospital case. And, you know, also if I was in a better space, I might have started with the allopathic, if I, if I knew better, <laughs> I, I would have started with the allopathic meds earlier and I wouldn't have... Um, experience the extent of the damage, um, specifically to my to the bronchi in my lungs. But I must say, touch wood now, once again, you know, following my, my protocols, following my intuition, and uh, with the one homeopath that I worked with, we kind of on the same page as well. So I went on to a homeopathic um, COVID protocol, which I did for three months. And we could systematically see from month to month as I went back to test my lung function, check my bronchi, um, from session to session, I had a hundred percent improvement. Now, you know, just in, to put this into perspective, I think the important thing is, is you know, the preventative healthcare side of things. Because one of the things that you don't want to be engaging with um, when you've got COVID is you want to be staying away from dairy products, wheat, and most definitely sugar, um, and because that that really takes you apart. Um, as you know, messes with your digestive system, your lungs. And I'm going to interject for our audience. So what Sean Hanekam is talking about, from a preventative standpoint, you want to be on an anti-inflammatory diet. So COVID-19 causes extreme inflama inflammation all over your body. So you want to be on an anti-inflammatory diet. And I came up with a really simple little sentence to explain it so that people can get it which is that nobody in their right mind eats cats. Nobody in their right mind eats cats. So what are cats? Caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, sugar. And then what I refer to as the friends of cats, which are fried foods and gluten. So you wanna get 
pro-inflammatory foods out of your diet, correct? And you want to be on an anti-inflammatory diet, which is fresh fruits and vegetables, lots of water. Yes? Absolutely. Yes. And I think the electrolyte component um, is important. And one of the things, so quercetin as a, as, a, as a supplement has come up with a, as a necessity, but the other um, Western med that has come up is a antihistamine was, was crucial to, to that recovery process in terms of, of, the, of the lung protocol. And what was important for me uh, is, like I said, my, my preventative care pre-COVID prevented me from landing in hospital. I then needed the Western medicine approach to get me out of danger. And I then needed the homeopathic um, intervention and then subtle energies, clearing my energy field um, and making sure that there's no external interferences um, has been an ongoing process in terms of my recovery. Because obviously, specific, specifically when we talk about pregnazone or, or cortisone, um, it, uh, I, I was actually joking uh, with it. My dosages were so high, I felt like Spider-Man. So I didn't need to sleep. I was climbing the walls at night. And 11, 12 o'clock, I was still ready to go. Um, and our fridge wasn't big enough um, for the appetite that I developed um, <laughs> with, the, with the prednisone. Um, so you just need to have that awareness because when you do take prednisone at high doses, I promise you, you're going to eat everything that's not nailed down. Um, and uh, so, yes, yeah, so that protocol was important. And like I said, specifically the, the recovery process, because unfortunately, from a Western medicine perspective, there are, there are certain protocols that they have. Um, like I said, in terms of what it needs to do, they achieve that objective. But beyond that, that's where your natural health and your energy healing. And for me, the energy healing is crucial um, to keep your energy field clear. Um, so because whatever happens in your energy field eventually manifests um, at a physical level for you. So, yes. This is a good time on a couple of resources that I can offer. So in 2020, I made a series of videos and articles to help people suffering from COVID. And one of the important ones that I did, and I'm going to include the link, is a video on acupressure for the lungs. So that if you get to the point where you're having difficulty breathing, there are acupressure points that you can stimulate anytime, anywhere, and you don't need someone else to help you that will help to keep your the energy pathways to your lungs open so that you can breathe. Also, during the coronavirus pandemic, I gave away for free my book, The Little Book of Breathwork, to people in 17 different countries. So if you would like to get a copy of the Little Book of Breathwork, just send me an email to Catherine with a C at CatherineKerrigan.com, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E-C-A-R-R-I-G-A-N.com. And I will send you via WeTransfer the Little Book of Breathwork, which is breathing exercises, hand mudras, and affirmations. And it's going to help you for sure manage the emotional side, the anxiety of being sick, and also give you breathing exercises that will help to improve your lung function. So let's go into Shonanakam. You mentioned that during the two weeks when you were the most sick, that you felt like you were going through a dark night of the soul. What are some of the emotions that you experienced while you were sick? And how did you, as a natural health expert, deal with the emotional side of being so sick? Look, I think the important thing, and one of the, if I want to use the word, one of the devastating factors that I've observed, which is part of the, I want to use the word, the COVID strategy. I know I'm going to press some buttons when I use that. But the, the biggest thing that people need to be aware of is not to participate in the emotion of fear. Because firstly, what happens is fear um, damages your, your kidney function, your kidney chi. And then your system gets run down. And this is what I realized with myself because I was working such long hours, although my um, immune system was great, but because I was working um, too much and I lacked balance because at that time with the number of people that I was working with, I actually stopped training. 
um, because I, I, I just needed to capitalize or maximize my time so that I could help these individuals appropriately. But what happened is my system was run down, which compromised my kidneys and my adrenals. And that put me in a, in a vulnerable spot. And that's when I got zapped. So, um, and because of, and I think the important thing is people shouldn't listen to, to mainstream media, social media. There's a wreck load of things going on out there. There's a lot of false information um, out there. So I want to urge you, if you, whatever information you receive, expand your own consciousness a bit, expand your circle of influence and, and do your own research. So, so look at the details. There is huge amounts of information available out there um, so that you can make an informed decision about engaging with the right thing. So fear, so fortunately for me, fear wasn't an issue, but I, I have this awareness as I've been working with people and I see people and how the fear actually compromises the immune system. But I think for me, the, the important thing was, was to stay calm, relaxed, not to panic about my condition. Um, and it was, it was like, it was about staying alive. Um, and it was, it was so weird that, uh, you know, although my wife and myself were extremely ill, it was like we were, you know, nobody came around. We were, we were kind of helping each other. We were focusing on helping ourselves. And the big thing that I stuck to was um, the medication side of things and not to, and not to give in to this, uh, into this, this specific condition. And fortunately for me, and I know, you know, so let me go back one step. So a lot of people out there don't have the ability or the skill, but what you can do is you close your eyes, you breathe in white light, and you can, you can basically use your hand and go to different body parts or organ systems. And when you close your eyes, you kind of uh, tune and shift your consciousness into that body part, see what emotion you are feeling. Um, and you also then look at the color that you are seeing. Is it dark and sludgy? Is it light? Is it liquid? Is it moving? Is it bright? And then what you do is you breathe in white light, a healing white light or whatever color works for you, you breathe in through your nose into that area and you release that emotion and you also release and you change the color of, of what you're busy seeing. Now, if you um, explore the um, Chinese approach of body psychology, you will see each organ system houses a, uh, a specific emotion or if you go to the five elements chart of, of Chinese medicine and you, go, you can go and see what the color of that organ system should be what the emotion is and, and you can and shift. For our audience, the healing color for your lungs is white, yes. right? Yeah, and yes. for the liver, it's green, mm -hmm. okay, the liver, the red. For the spleen, it's yellow, yeah, and for and the spleen, it's well. blue. And so you can breathe in these specific colored lights into these organs to help balance them energetically. I think Sean Hanekam, let's talk about, you know, one of the most, some of the most common long-term side effects of long COVID um, is loss of taste and loss of the sense of smell. So did you lose your sense of taste and did you lose your sense of smell and what are you doing about it? So look, I must say touch wood, um, my, my lack of, of taste and smell must probably only last at about six weeks. Um, per se, but because of the fact that I was engaging with the, with the correct supplements at the time, um, I, um, um, I, I managed to remedy that situation. The other thing that I found was a, a groggy mind, a loss of memory. So I would look at somebody, I know their name, but I couldn't pr pronounce their name. So it's like I'd lost words. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I went to the homeopath, I said to her, look, I think my, my neural pathways in terms of my nervous system has been damaged. She said, well, you know, she gets together with all these groups and she hasn't heard of that yet. And I said, let me tell you now, I went into the Akashic Records, the Akashic Master says I've got nerve damage. And although I've been working on it, and I must say, as I indicated earlier, I was so um, overtaking tablets when I was better, I kind of cut back on my protocol. Um, and invariably my bells palsy at the moment is a result of that initial nerve damage that I that I experienced, 
um, because I've also been then utilizing um, some of the superfoods that are brilliant. And the one specific food um, I can refer to is, um, is lion's mane as a, as, as a Western herb, which is very good for the brain and for the memory. You want to obviously look at things like your B vitamins, B12, choline, inositol, that type of thing. And then the superfood that I engaged with was a product called Lucuma, L-U-C-U-M-A. And that has, has a couple of different ingredients in there which feed and stimulate neural pathways. It's got some 5-HTP, which is great if you're not on antidepressants, and that helps your brain relax. And the big thing there was obviously then to, to stimulate communication in the brain where your, your choline and inositol um, facilitates that, that brain spark, if I can call that. And then the important thing, which most people struggle with in any case, is consuming sufficient amounts of water on a daily basis. Now, just to, to help our listeners out there, the formula that I use is 30 moles of water per kilogram of body weight. Okay. The time that you... For our audience in the US, you want to take drink half your body weight in ounces of water. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you want to drink 75 ounces of water, right? Okay. So whether, depending on whether you're using liters or pounds and ounces, yeah? yeah. And that hydration is so important because your lungs will uh, need water and also your, your body needs water in order to oxygenate properly, yeah. And I think the important thing there is, you know, a lot of people think also because they are consuming water, they're automatically um, absorbing. One of the main things that I found that COVID triggered within me was shock and, and shock um, at a cellular level. And that shock then also triggers paralysis, which invariably for some people then triggers hair loss. Yes. Okay, because it's impacting the liver and it's impacting the kidneys. Um, so. And that's why um, to go to an energy healer is so important is so that the guys can clear all these um, distorted energy patterns of emotions that um, are preventing you from healing and creating what we talk about. When we speak about quantum physics, we talk about a particle response or a stress response. We need to release that and create a wave response. So that's why. And I want to share for our audience, I also created videos in 2020 on how to clear shock out of your system okay so i did you can go to youtube and i'll include the links on katherine kerrigan how to acupressure for your lungs how to clear shock and also how to clear post-traumatic stress disorder because i think many people sean hanukkah before you got covid you were certainly one of the healthiest people i know Right? Absolutely. And, and when you look uh, at throughout your life, Sean Hanukkah, and the different illnesses that you had, because all of us get sick from time to time, how would you rank your experience of COVID? Was it the most challenging illness? What, how would you put it in perspective throughout your life? The most deadly. <laughs> the most some, Yeah, you know, I was actually saying to my brother-in-law when he phoned the one day, I said to him, this is the one disease you don't want because, and funny enough, a couple of weeks later, he ended up getting it and ended up in ICU um, on a ventilator for three weeks and touch wood, he also came through that. But yeah, the, the, unless you've had it, and I know there's been varying degrees, some people have it mild, a cough or a sniffle for two or three days. Um, but like I said, I had it at the, at the nth degree and you don't want to go there. You know, that's why I say you end up experiencing this dark night of the souls um, in that space that you are, because first you're scared you're going to die, then you're scared you're not going to die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, it's very, very, uh, very deadly. All right. Now, Sean Hanukkah, as you know, um, whenever we go through an illness and you go through the very hard work of getting well, it changes us. Maybe it changes our perspective on what's important in life. How did going through COVID-19 change you? Well, I think the, the, the biggest shift for me was, is that, you know, I need to rely on myself 
um, from a healing perspective. Um, the other thing that was important for me was balance in my daily life was not negotiable because it's, you know, it's like being on an airplane when, when those oxygen masks pop out, you put the mask on for yourself first and then the person next to you. And in my case, I was going so hard trying to help everybody else that I dropped the ball and uh, I, I obviously reaped. And, and you know, I just have to interject that a, a comment because I'm 62 and I'm there. I didn't have to get COVID-19, but I remember when in my, I was in my 40s and I was seeing 10 people a day and it wasn't about money. I was just super motivated to help people. But, you know, those of us who are healers need to remember you are important. You're part of the whole. And if we had lost Sean, then, you know, Sean wouldn't be able to help all the people that he continues to help. So whether you're a healer or a mother or a father or whoever you are, you're important. We need you. <laughs> yeah, and I think the important thing there as well is, is that people need to listen to their bodies. And, and COVID is one of those diseases that if you think you're going to self-heal, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. Um, so the quicker, the better that you receive your, and, I, and I'm using the term Western meds, and by all means, um, utilize your supplement protocols, keep that going, even if you reduce your, your dosages and your quantities, but your body needs that information. And um, the other important factor is your gut microbiome, because I've seen varying degrees of people's state of health. So people's immune system might be great. The good bacteria is good, but the bad bac bacteria has been compromised. Boom, there's an opening for COVID. Um, so the gut microbiome is absolutely crucial in, in terms of that aspect um, and, uh, and balance. You know, like in my case, I used to work six days a week. I now only work five days a week and I've cut my daily productivity by 30%. And when I get to the end of the day, even if I have the energy to do more, I don't. So I invest that time in myself, whether I sleep, whether I chill, whatever. But it's, it's almost like I go into self-preservation mode and I prepare for the, for the next day's... Uh, yeah. Um, and, you know, the word, Sean Hanekam, that I use with my clients is sustainable. So, again, I'm 62 years old. <laughs> Okay, it's all real, but my work is sustainable, meaning that I'm not working so hard that I'm making myself sick or setting, you know, okay, but I, I want to point out that anybody can get COVID. Again, some okay. of my healthiest clients got COVID and you were extremely healthy, but you don't want to go there. So final question, Sean Hanukkah, one of the main side effects of long COVID is fatigue. So seven months later, you know, you who've taken advantage of traditional medicine and natural medicine, how's your energy now? And what are some of the important things that people can do to restore their personal chi after getting so sick? Look, I think the important thing, and this was also, this was also shared to me again by the Akashic Masters. So whether you have the opportunity to engage with something like Tai Chi or your yoga practice, um, Qigong, I found that Qigong was very powerful because Qigong also has a couple of lung um, exercises and, uh, and activities, and it's really about developing your, your chi field. And uh, also, as you develop your chi field, one of the things that you develop with Qigong is, your, is, is, is by expanding your chi field. Now, when you expand your chi field and you, and you connect with that and you spend a bit more time meditating, and connecting to your higher self, um, you will find that you can access or you can feel when there's interference um, on the external barrier of your chi field, which is your first line of defense. And then you can have that addressed by an energy practitioner before that negative energy um, connects with your, with your body. Yes, you and know? for our audience, I'm also going to include links on to free Qigong videos. Because even when you're exhausted, even if you can just visualize yourself, there's a lot of scientific research about people who've gotten well by, they're lying in the bed, but they visualize themselves doing these exercises. 
And the breathing exercises are so important for getting the energy moving. So Sean Hanicum, so you're better. And after seven months of very hard work on yourself, about how much money do you estimate that you spent on your personal recovery? Well, I think up until now, from the time it started with everything that I put together, I must have spent twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars U.S. dollars. So it cost you twenty-five thousand dollars, yeah, over yeah. seven months. And how do you? How is your personal energy now? Before you got sick. When I say my energy is better, because I'm obviously managing my my day better, and I'm not I'm not pushing the the limits and the boundaries. Like I said, I've cut my my, my, my normal daily protocol by 30%. And when I look at when I got ill, I was, was probably doing 50% more. Um, and so I've obviously trimmed all of that fat, so to speak, um, in terms of that activity, because obviously working energetically, that also drains your energy. So I make sure that I, that I eat correctly, that I start off with a good breakfast, and I, I call it a power breakfast because it's all my superfoods and things that go with that. I engage with smoothies at 10 o'clock i eat again lunchtime i eat and invariably after i've had a meal i go and lie down i work on myself i clear my energy field and then invariably i fall asleep and i've set my alarm clock so i wake up um timelessly for my afternoon session and then i facilitate my afternoon session and then i've obviously got renewed energy and that that goes with that and uh, when i'm finished working i clear my field again and it just depends. I normally start an hour earlier every morning. So I, I tap into the Qigong exercises. And depending on where I am during the day, I might get up and do some Qigong protocols um, because we're bringing in universal energy there. We are bringing pure, um, untainted energy. Um, and that's, you know, from an innate intelligence perspective, that's normal to us. And uh, and another resource for our audience, one of my 10 books is called Unlimited Energy Now. And that can be applied, the principles in that, that book is all about how to restore your energy on the physical, energetic, emotional, mental, and spiritual levels. And even if you're just listening to this and you feel tired, there's things in that book that will help you restore your chi or to recover. So Sean Hanukkah, Final thoughts for our audience. We really wish you well. We're glad you're still here. We're glad you're feeling better. Any final thoughts from your for our audience about how to recover from long COVID? Yeah, I think the, the important thing is, is to be mindful. Um, COVID in itself is not your normal run of the mill day to day head cold um, um, per se. So, you know, have that awareness and do whatever you need to do. So if you need to take steroids, take steroids. If you need to do more protein, do more protein. Um, and no two people are the same. Um, so you'll be lucky if you meet a gifted um, energy practitioner or a medical intuitive or somebody that works in the Akashic Records because they'll be able to guide you to um, what is relevant for you as an individual. What's, because what's good for Paul is not necessarily good for Peter. And uh, you don't un want to unnecessarily tap into, as I said, mainstream media, where, where one size fits all. Thank um, you so, so much for listening. This is Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author, and host of the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Our guest today has been Sean Hanukkah, medical intuitive healer, integrative wellness practitioner in South Africa. You can find out more about Sean Hanukkah and his wonderful work at nautiluswellness.com. And remember, you don't want to get COVID. Do whatever it takes to avoid getting COVID. And if you do get sick, by all means, integrate medical, doctors and natural healing and work and realize that we need you. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time.